What is going on everybody and in this video I will be installing the first half of my two zone orbit DIY sprinkler system kit. My install is going to be a little different as I'm going to be adding some components to make it work with my yard setup. Going over what comes in the box, they give you a pipe cutter that works fine, but for best results I would buy a PVC cutter from Home Depot or your nearest hardware store as it's faster and gives you a better cut. This kit comes with the Orbit Saturn 3 Gen 2 sprinkler heads and yes there is a difference between the Gen 2 and the Gen 1 heads, so it's important to know. The Gen 2 Saturn 3s can only use the Saturn 4 nozzles, so if you need to change your nozzles, don't buy the regular Saturn 3 nozzles. They won't fit. Moving on to the manual, they give you a couple of different recommendations for sprinkler layout. On this first zone you'll see me install in this video, I basically just modify one of their recommended designs. They also tell you what the recommended distance between heads should be based on your water pressure and gallons per minute. They give you plenty of fittings and blue lock pipe, and if you ever need more or different types of fittings because you want to modify your system like I did, you can find all types of parts for your system on the Home Depot app or website. I found this to be the best way to get parts. And last but not least, we have the timer. First order of business is to check my water pressure in gallons per minute. The gauge in this clip was reading 60 psi, which is a little lower than usual at my house as it's usually around 80. It'll still work just fine off 60. And I didn't show this part, but I did grab a 5 gallon bucket and it took me almost 30 seconds to fill it, meaning I have around 10 gallons per minute at this faucet, which is plenty for what I'm doing. After that it was time to lay the tubing out across the lawn to let it soften. This will make it easier to work with. And I've already measured and marked the entire yard using brazing rods with a piece of duct tape tied to the top. Hey, it works, don't judge me. Most of the heads are spaced 25 feet apart. All right, so of course the camera falls because why wouldn't it fall? Why wouldn't it want me to get good shots? I've, ro I've rolled this out, we're gonna let that sit. I now interrupt myself with a voiceover. The original plan was to build the PVC splitter for the spigot, but I needed more parts for that so I went right to installing the sprinklers instead. Right now, I'm unwrapping the fittings and getting the first three sprinkler heads ready to go. On the back of the sprinkler heads, it says do not use pipe dope. However, this doesn't mean you can't use Teflon tape. I didn't use any Teflon tape on zone one, but I found I needed to on zone two. And no, to my knowledge, there weren't even any small leaks on zone one without the tape. I did thoroughly check. Now time to remove my makeshift flags and hammer some wooden poles into the ground so I can attach the sprinkler heads and see if I need to tweak their position. Now with the first three sprinklers in their positions, I wanted to connect these up and see what their range is on this setup and make adjustments if needed. Once these are all connected up, tested and repositioned if needed, the other three will be added on and tested before completely burying zone one. A good tip is to make sure when you're cutting, you leave just a little bit of slack on the line. Not too much, but just enough where it will make burying the pipe much easier. The main line you see me putting down now does eventually get pulled up and replaced by a larger 3 quarter inch PVC line. That will be in a later video. Alright, so we got the first three sprinklers in the system here. Now that these three are connected up, I think it's time to give them some water. Let's fire it up. Two minutes. Let's see what happens. 
Ooh, you can hear it. Ooh, yeah, whoa. Oh, there they go. Oh, whoa, we got a leak. We've got a leak. Oh, we've got a few leaks. Oh yeah, all right, so that'd be why my pressure's so low. Well, that's, that's a big leak. After fixing the leaks, the pressure is much better. The coverage is great, and all the sprinkler heads have the smallest nozzle in possible, which is 0.5 gallons per minute, which is the most I'll be able to get out of them as I only have half-inch pipes supplying these with water at anywhere from 60 to 80 PSI. Yes, I know at the beginning of this I was reading 60, but I did another reading a few weeks later and it was back up to 80. There we go. And the pressure is going to start increasing. Get you guys a good view there. Look at that pressure. It's so much better than before. As you can see, I got them, got the head to head coverage going on. I got to kind of readjust this one a little bit. It is hitting the pole, but you get the idea. Now it's day two of the install where I'm starting to bury the entire system. I went ahead and got the other three heads connected off camera. And yes, the line is essentially one big loop, but I did see someone else do this, and when I thought about it, I figured it would work pretty good for my setup as well. And it did. I didn't use the drain valves because it's one big loop, but don't worry, I did use my air compressor system to drain these before the winter. Now with sprinkler number one in the ground and working just fine, it's time to start the very long process of burying the pipe and all of the other sprinkler heads. And no, that first one is not as deep as I would have wanted it to be, but it's near the pole, so it's fine. It took me two minutes to just dig this with the shovel, but then for the past 10 minutes, I've been kind of getting it a little deeper and working some of the smaller rocks out and just throwing it in that pot. So now, and it's not even like crazy deep, unfortunately, and it's definitely not like what, how deep you're supposed to do it, but uh, it'll just slip right in there. And then I'm gonna use this mallet basically, and I'm just gonna work it back together. That's what I'm gonna do, like that, kinda stitch it back together, like that. A couple of things to note here. One, I would not recommend hammering the grass back together. Although a neat idea and it looks great right after you trench it, you essentially kill the grass by doing that and I had trench marks across the lawn for the next month. Two, although it says in the manual it will only take a few hours, the reality of that is based on where you live. I have very rocky soil with lots of small and big rocks, so I had to take extra time to get all those out in order to get the pipe deeper. Even then, you'll notice this pipe is rather shallow because there were big rocks in the soil I couldn't do anything about. Three, this pipe was able to withstand the aerator when the company came by in the fall. It hit the line in two different spots and all it left was a light dent mark on the top. I leak checked it and it was all fine. Just please don't put what I'm saying to the test. I'm not responsible for that if you do it. I have no idea how I'm gonna do zone two, but good, good God, man, this is, this is gonna be a long time. All right, everyone, so it is the next day, the day after Memorial Day. I have my camera on charger right now, so I can't go any further than this. Right where the hose pretty much is coming out, I started there today, and I'm already a good three feet on, so the rest of this length really shouldn't be too difficult. After splitting the ground, all I did was insert the pipe and I malleted the ground back together, which again, don't mallet it back together. Use your foot instead to lightly push it back together. And after taking a few hours break to go see the new Top Gun movie, on my way home they played this song on the radio that I haven't heard in years. So of course, I played it again while I continued the install. I would offer you only one tip for the future. Sunscreen would be it. And of course, as usual, I got distracted by the weather and I had to make sure it wasn't heading in my direction anyways, so while I watched the radar, I set my camera up. And I got some cool pictures too. 
After watching the weather for a bit, I realized it was going to stay west of me, so I continued work into the night to try and get the second sprinkler head in the ground. This was the most difficult line to bury. The amount of big rocks that I couldn't move was honestly crazy, and they were shallow too. So this section of pipe is only 4 to 6 inches in the ground, when you really need it to be anywhere from 8 to 12 inches in the ground. However, like I mentioned earlier, this line did survive the aerator. Alright, so as you saw, I got that all set. Here's the hole, kind of caved in a little bit, but this is the best one I've got. And look at that, there's the plug of grass we're going to put right back in when we're done. I ended for the night with the sounds of the storm in the distance, and as it was now 10 o'clock, I was looking at the yard wondering how on earth this was going to be finished before the end of the summer. Anyways, now day four of the project, I made the decision to move the head further back where I can get it deeper in the ground. My original fear with this is that it wouldn't reach the other heads, but to my surprise, this one has the tallest beam of water and reached both heads no problem. This was the test run after I moved the head back and loosely strapped it. You can see this project was taking me long enough that I mowed the lawn around the project. With sprinkler head number two in the ground, I did realize I could have put the tee further down the pipe so I could eliminate at least 10 feet of pipe going to head number three, but since the first length of pipe took me so long, I decided to not mess with it. The system works anyways, so just leave it alone. This sprinkler head is at a slight angle, but it works to my advantage as it shoots the beam of water further into the yard, reaching the other two heads, and it shoots lower in the direction of the fence. All right, so everybody, this is where we're at. You saw me put that in earlier. This is about, uh, I'd say, a half hour later, all the way down to here. I'm already here. It's going really well, and I'm hoping that in the next 15 or so, maybe half hour, really, I'm going to hope to get this one in the ground. Shockingly enough, 20 minutes later and I had the ground split and ready to put the pipe and the sprinkler in the ground. I didn't have any issue getting this pipe 8 to 12 inches in the ground, which was really helpful in moving this along. progress update head number three is in the ground there it is right now it's currently covered in some dirt but um that's all set and in i just have to pretty much tuck this in a little deeper and then cover that up and that's it we have three of the heads in for this zone and only three to go so i'll fire it up and uh let's see what this thing does After that, I decided I wanted to continue and try my best to get the fourth sprinkler in the ground. So about an hour later, and I successfully dug the trench and was ready to get it done. Until the camera died. But in that time, I was able to go above and beyond and got the fifth sprinkler in the ground, leaving me with just one left. The fifth was difficult. There's a massive boulder right where I originally wanted it to go. And even where I was able to get it in the ground, the line is bent because there's another boulder to the right of this sprinkler, preventing the line from being straight. So again, like I mentioned before, if you're gonna use this kit or any other kit for that matter to put in sprinklers, the time is going to vary drastically depending on where you live and how rocky your yard is. Mine is definitely a worst case scenario, but I managed. Now, after four days of hard work, let's see 90% of this system in action.
With some topsoil put on top of the sprinkler that definitely isn't deep enough, it was time to get the final sprinkler in the ground, which again my camera conveniently stopped working for. All of the sprinkler heads are buried. That's it. Nice covered up lawn. I ran into a ton of rocks over here and I had to add some extra pipe in here to get that in the ground. Put some uh, grass on there that's been growing under here, right there, and then some topsoil. And yeah, there's the final head. So then the last thing to really do is to bury this. Then we have zone one complete. I finally got these lines buried and this is gonna stay like that until um, I get zone two ready to go because this, uh, the second line is gonna pretty much go right on top of this and then get sent straight back to zone two. And I kind of walked up and down here with grass seed and stuff. And I put dirt down as well. You can see there's some seed and some dirt there. This one wasn't too bad. This one was pretty good. That one's in the ground really well, so that one's all set. This one up here is also pretty good. I mean, you can definitely see the lines, but yeah, the system is in the ground. All good for watering. And now all we have left to do is program the timer. All right, so now we're here at the timer and I currently have it set to auto in order to get the manual button to work. It has to be set to auto. So let's go to clock set, set the clock on this thing. It is currently 717. Start time is gonna be four o'clock in the morning. And this is for station one. Since station two isn't hooked in yet, we're not gonna worry about it. So there it is, there's our start time. So we'll go to how long, let's go back to start time. Yep, so start time is 4 a.m. How long? I'm gonna have this zone run for 30 minutes. Switch it to how often. Now we'll switch it back to how long. Yep, 30 minutes, it is saved. And we're gonna do every three days. Off. Here we go, so it should all be saved. Set it to auto, water's on, 719. So there we go, it's gonna next water in nine hours. So it will run tomorrow morning for 30 minutes and then wait three days. And that will pretty much conclude part one of the DIY in-ground sprinkler system install. Thank you all for watching as this video not only took a while to film and put all together, but I've spent the last month on and off editing this video and making sure it's as close to perfect as can be. I would definitely recommend anyone that does want to do this to use a trenching machine. That would have saved me a ton of time, but if you're in no rush, then you can absolutely do it the way I did it, minus the mallet, of course. Anyways, thanks again for watching and look out for part two where I install zone two and a part three where I install my PVC splitter and the three quarter inch PVC pipes. Thanks again and peace.